Hello traders, how are you? This is Wanjuli Bishangi from Forex Exploits Online Academy. How have you been? I hope you've been well. I've been well myself. It's a new month, it's October, and I hope that you're going to work this trading journey with you. If you're new to my channel, if this is your first time to come across my channel, remember to stay organized. Start with the older videos so that you understand what Forex is about and also how to get started. Get your notebook. Do not just watch the videos, make some notes, and most important, make sure that you back test, back test before using a live account. For those people who are returning uh, subscribers, remember you can contact me, you can send me a message, you can send me a WhatsApp text, from either of the socials using the same name, Forex Exploits Only Academy. I have a page on Facebook, there's a group, and also if you're not on Facebook, you can find me on LinkedIn, same name on all platforms. Now for today's video, we'll be talking about divergence, how to trade divergence, what different types of divergences do we have, how do we find them, and of course, how to trade them. So let's get started. What is divergence? And before we get started, remember forex trading is a high risk business, so do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. So what is divergence? Divergence basically is when price is moving in the opposite direction as of what is being shown on the oscillator indicator. For example, the other side. For beginners, you go to your trading platform. There are different types of indicators. So there's that group of indicators that we call the oscillator indicators. One of them is the RSI, and that is what we'll be measuring on on today's session. So now this divergence is usually a sign of a possible. The most important word here is possible. It's a sign of possible trend change, meaning not all divergences mean that the uh, the market is going to change. No, it's just a possibility. Therefore, be very keen not to chase the sniper entries without enough confidence. Remember, we are block traders, we are institutional traders, we are flow traders, we are volume traders. Therefore, our trades, our trades need to have extra confidence or extra confirmation so that we do not have to take. But now, what are the different types of divergences that you have? I know there are traders who use the customized indicators, uh, the ones that are developed uh, by programmers out there, like the TDI. Now, the TDI will give you the type of divergences that we call by form, by form type of divergences. Now, by form type of divergences are very, very common in the customized indicators. This would be the hidden divergence, the regular divergence, irregular divergences, and others. But on this session, I want to talk about the divergence by size, the ones that are uh, categorized by size. When you talk about size, you're either big or small, you wide or narrow. That, those are the kind of uh, divergences that we'll be measuring on. And of course, it's the that type which is on conference. And conference basically means confirmation. So you can have the unconfirmed divergence, you can make call it unconfirmed, or you can call it uh, the failed divergence. So of course, I'm going to show you these types, different uh, types on uh, the chart so that you get to understand. So just like I've mentioned by form, you have the regular, irregular, and the hidden. And of course, there's usually a fourth one. Then there is by size, which is the stretched out or the wide one. So when we talk about by size, uh, I'll show you a diagram, but it's just stretched out. Okay, so one swing high. Remember, when we're talking about market structure, and if you don't know what market structure is, just post this video first. Post this video first and watch the market structure video. Very important. So when you're pushing uh, on a buying cycle will be having higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. Then at the top here, or where the market wants to take a retracement, on the chart, you're going to find that we are having higher highs. So I've already said that this is a higher high. So this is a higher high. 
そうそうそうはいはいそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう But on the indicator, the market is pushing down. Now, this difference, this difference is what we call the divergence. Now, when we say that it's stretched out, it means that this swing, this swing high and this swing high has some distance. So you can be having one high there. So you could be having one high. At that point and the next high is wide okay so this distance here this distance is what you're saying it's wide it's stretched out then the other option remember you can also have the same on the setting side so on the setting side you'll be having lower lows the market will be creating lower lows so this is a lower low and this is a lower low Death. So this this move lower low, but on the oscillator the market will give you a lower low, and then instead of creating the second lower low, it gives you a higher low. So on the oscillator it's pushing up, while on the chart it's pushing down. Now this is the wide, like it's wide. Even on the on the oscillator it's going to be wide. Now. What I want you to pay attention to is when we're talking about wide or stretch out a divergence, you can actually spot it. It's very easy to spot. You just open your chart and you're like, yes, this is divergent. It's very easy to the eye. Now, the other part or the other group is the narrow or the tight. Now, this one is not easy. This is not easy to spot, especially for untrained eye. Or, a, or someone who's just starting or someone who has not already watched this video. But once you watch this video, of course, you'll be on the know and you will be identifying them like a pro, okay? So how does a narrow or tight uh, divergence appear? So on the buying cycle, it's going to show up like this. So you have that high and then maybe there'll be a cut of wood or something and then it shows like this. Okay, it's not stretched out. It's not stretched out. It's really just almost on the same area. Then on the other side, on the other side, it will be like this, really tight. Sometimes it has this behavior of creating some zigzags. Okay, it will be totally tight. That's how you. You, you get to know it. Now, how do you make it easier? Now, let's just do on the setting cycle, it's gonna be a lower low, and then maybe a pot of wood or some kind of pattern or some doji or something, and then it goes like this. Okay, so very tight. It's not stretched out. On the other side again, it will be a low. Okay, no much spacing. Now, how, how do you like now navigate that tightness or how do you navigate from struggling to see it? The best thing is for you to change your chart to a line chart. I'm gonna show you how, but when you change your chart to a line chart, you're able to actually see uh, the narrow or tight divergence. So I hope now you know what divergence is. It's basically when the chart and the other side are showing Different things. One is pushing up, the other one will be pushing down. When the other one is pushing down, the other one will be pushing up. Okay? Basically. Now, by form, I've already explained how these uh, divergences are and what we are going to discuss. Now, what are the characteristics of the stretch chart? Of course, the swing highs and lows are very wide. They're obvious to the eye and easy to spot on both charts and indicator. One most important thing, it gives high quality setup if confirmed. That's the most important thing. If it is confirmed, 
the wide out uh, or stretched out divergence will give very high theta. Now the swing is an indication when we talk about the swing, now the highs, the higher highs and the lower lows, you know, on the market structure, we say that once a higher high is, is, is formed, of course, we expect the market to take a break, okay? That break basically means whoever was pushing the market to the high has now taken some profit, so we need it to give us some discount. And so that is basically what I'm explaining here, that the swing is an indication that the trend is no longer being so controlled by the party that pulled it to that swing price. So if you're pushing on the highs and a high has been created, now the buyers have taken profits, they want the market, the sellers to take uh, some, something too, so that they can push it lower for the buyers now to get a discount. And, and of course I have figures here for you, diagrams for you to see. So this is a wide, a wide divergence. You see this is a swing high and another swing high. You see there's a lot of difference or distance. And then on the other side, of course, the market has a swing high, but the next high is lower. So this one is pushing up, the other one will be pushing down. So this is an example of uh, divergence, okay, divergence when you've been pushing to a buy and you want to retrace or reverse to a sell. Now, if you've been pushing down and you want to reverse for a buy, we'll be having the lower lows, you see the swing lows, these swing lows are, are wide, so there's some distance between the two, but because you want to reverse to the top side, on the other side, the second leg, so this can be your first leg, the second leg, on the second leg, the leg will be higher. It will be higher on the RSI. So that these are what the patterns that you'll be looking for when you get to the charts. Remember, very important, these divergences will work best if you identify them on a higher time frame. I'm gonna mention the time frames later, but if you can identify this on a higher time frame, then the better for you. And what about the narrow or tight? I've already shown you the difference. So the swings are very close to each other, sometimes almost hard to notice on charts and on the indicator. So they give medium quality types of trades. Now, I'm not saying medium so that you ignore them. No, I'm just saying that you not find them having a very high probability or very high payout compared to the wide ones, okay? because the wide ones means there's a lot of volume. Now note, the narrow divergence is not easy to spot, therefore change your charts to a line chart. I think I had already mentioned that. Now, what about the third type, the third type or what we call the unconfirmed or the failed divergence? Now, this can either be a wide or narrow type of divergence, okay? It can either be the narrow or the, uh, the wide type, but once it fails, this is what I'm let me maybe draw something so that you can uh, get the hang of it. So let's say we're pushing down. So we're creating those lower lows and lower lows and lower lows. And then we get divergence at this point here. So on the charts, it's showing me pushing down. But on our oscillator, it will be pushing down and then gives us the second leg here will be pushing higher. So we've already had our divergence. But this market, but this market does not, I hope you watched the confirmation video, so you know that if this high here is not broken, if it doesn't break that, so it pushes up, but does not break this high, then the chances of this being a success goes back to zero. So it gets there, then decides, no, I don't want to buy. I just want to go down. So this type of unconfirmed or failed divergence is the that type, where there was divergence, yes, it was okay on the chart, it was okay on the other side, but when it came to the actual move, it did not meet the that part, which is breaking that high so that we can have that straight move into the top, okay? And if you're on the buy side, of course, we're going to see this better on the chart. 
So I'm just trying to illustrate. So on a bar, we'll be having that. Then we get to that point where we have the divergence. We expect the market to push down because on the chart, we have that. But on the other side, we have it this. Remember, it can be narrow or, or, or wide. But the market fails to break this law here. So it's, get, it's like creating liquidity. It's a part where it does create liquidity and then the market shoots back up. Okay. When this happens, this is now what we call the failed type. Let me show you an example. We had this example this week. Look at this. Look at this chart here. So we had uh, we had this we had this high created. This is a narrow one. You can see it's quite narrow. So we have this high and another high here. But we expected the market to come down from this point. Now we want it to come down and at least break this low, this higher low. We wanted to break this higher low, but it didn't. This did not break this law. So what happened? Since it, no, it did not break this law, it had now to go back. So if you're waiting for confirmation, it did not get confirmed. Therefore, if you took the sell from this part, it's of course a failing trade. This usually happens a lot if it's on a Friday. Friday, you know, but Friday is a dump. It's so all such, such things. I'm not just saying it's gonna happen on a Friday. It of course can happen on any other day, but be very keen if you find this type of divergences on Friday. If it does not break that part there, you expect it to be a mess or a failed type. So this is what I'm saying. I know I've gotten ahead of myself because I've not actually shown how to do the RSI. So let's let's do that before we continue. So now you open your chart. Now, this is for beginners in the house. If you're here and you do not know how to do your other side, so this is what you do, and this is how you mark your levels. Okay, so you go to your chart. Is this insert? So you click on insert. There are indicators. You go to your oscillators, then you go to RSI. Just click on it. When you do it, you have it, it's on default, you just have it on 14. When you get to the levels, now you can mark the levels that you want. For me, the 30, which is the bottom side, I've marked it as demand, and the 70 as supply. You can set in your color that you want. Remember, you can also add other levels if you want. You can have the 50, you can have the 15, the 85. You choose what you want, and then you click OK. By doing that, you see this is now the RSI on default. I have not changed anything. It's on default settings so it's still on the uh, on the 14. so here at the bottom side remember another side is an indicator that is supposed to show you uh, the buy side the overbought and the oversold kind of uh, areas or the areas basically that's the traditional way of using another side where the the market below when the market comes below 30 you know that they have been oversold therefore you'll be looking for buying opportunities now if it goes above 70 you know that it has been overbought therefore you'll be looking for selling opportunities okay but now that's the traditional way but now we'll be using it not only traditionally because in the traditional manner there is a problem if the market is ranging if the market has been on a trend for a while and it's Said to consolidate, not actually arrange. It may be in a value or in an area for a longer time. For example, look at this here. He stayed on this region for quite a while, okay? Before now, pushing up or something. So you cannot just say when it touches the that now you get to a buy, you're going to lose a lot of money when you do that. So you're not going to be using the RSI in the traditional. Man, uh, we're going to add the buttons just to pump things up, okay? So let's get back to the note. So note, do not be quick to trade based on divergence only. Wait for extra conference to, of course, avoid bad 
threads. The reason we have this channel is so that I can always tell you how to avoid these bad trades. You'd rather not trade at all instead of taking, of course, bad trades. So how are we going to add this divergence to an RSI? So RSI, of course, I've already mentioned, it's an indicator designed to show overbought and oversold areas in a market. It has different levels and you can, of course, add yours. I've shown you the 30 and the 70. Note a trader may add as many levels as they desire. You can make it as dirty or as neat as you wish based on your trading style. So now traditionally you use the RSI to either check when they are overbought areas and uh, oversold areas. But of course I've already mentioned that there are some times that it may stay longer in an area, therefore making it not ideal to take trades on RSI alone. I have one rule that I do not bash other people's types of trading, but using RSI alone can be a little bit tricky. Therefore, look for extra confirmation, such as either a trend line break, moving average break, or candlestick pattern. That way, you're going to have higher probability types of trades. Now, let's talk about the, how to combine now the areas that we've mentioned, which are the overbought and the oversold areas with divergence. Now, when using RSI, divergence can be further grouped depending on where it appears, either on the wide or the narrow. So you can have divergence either on the areas, the oversold or the overbought. That is one way, having divergence inside those areas. That would mean it will be below 30 or it will be above 30. Now that's the highest probability type of divergence to trade when it is inside, it's inside those areas. Or number two, you can actually have divergence that is now not inside the area, but it is near that area. So it can be divergence near the 70 level or divergence near the that it has not yet gotten into the area, but it's just near there. It's just near that area. Now, those are the other two ways how to group. So it's either inside the area or close to that area. Of course, those two types have different probability level. Okay. Now let's rank them. Which is the best way to combine when you when you actually looking for a trade because we are learning this so that you can trade right. So how are you going to know which is a high probability setup and what type of setup to actually just let it slide. So not forex trading is a field of probability. Therefore, as a trader, one should take trades with the highest probability of success. Now, when using RSI and divergence, you can rank the success level in this manner. If you want to get the highest, the highest probability, you want to have your wide swings on the chart. And the wide swings should also show on the indicator, in this case, your RSI. Not only that, you want your RSI to be inside the RSI areas. So to have the highest, you want it to be a wide swing on the chart and RSI, and the RSI should be inside the overbought or oversold areas. If you get those three items correct, then you have the highest probability trade setup. Then of course, this is not a textbook field where not everything shows as perfect as it should. Therefore, we should also have other ranks. Now we have a medium. We have a medium probability trade where we have the wide swings both on chart and on RSI. Then the RSI will be close to the RSI area. Now it's not inside, it's close. When it's close, it gives you the medium. Then we have number three, rank number three that we're going to call it average. Now we have the tight swings. Remember the tight swings are where uh, the swings are close to each other, which you need to turn to a line chart to see. So we have the tight swings on the chart and also on RSI. 
Then RSI itself will be inside the RSI area. So there are tight swings on the chart and RSI, but RSI is inside the area, the overbought and oversold area. That trade setup will be an average type. So it's gonna be good. It's going to pay out, uh, to pay out of course, but it, it ranks as number three. And we have the final one, or number four. Of course, you can have as many as you want, but I just grouped four. So we have the good one. Good, it still pays out at the end of the day, where we have the tight swings on chart and on RSI, so the swings are tight, but the RSI this time is just close enough. It's close to the RSI area. So those are the four ranks that you can use to identify. Now, how will the ranking help? The ranking will help when you're flexing your muscles on those lot sizes. When you're deciding the lot size to use, make sure that you're, you've based it on the, uh, you've based it on the lung. So if you're having a very high, you're not worried. You can at least, you know, maybe scaling or you can uh, use great trading. But if you're having a good, a good setup, now you need to be uh, not worried, but you need to be careful with your load sizes, okay? Extra conference. I keep saying don't take a trade until it's totally confirmed. So when you're using RSI and divergence, what else can you use for extra confidence? Now there are different ways to confirm if a divergence or reversal is real or is just a pick up. So you can use um, you can use trend lines, you can use moving averages, and of course you can use the candlestick patterns. I've done independent videos on each of these, therefore you can just pause this video, go to the YouTube channel, uh, and of course, watch the video. So now, how do you use a trend line when you're using RSI and divergence? One, in an uptrend, the market will be creating higher highs and higher lows, right? So in the event that the rule is broken, where the RSI now gives you a lower high, you're going to draw a trend line on the immediate market on higher time. Let me draw that for you quick. So we're having these higher highs. And at that point, you have that divergence there. So what you're going to do, you're going to draw your trend line on that immediate market. Draw your trend line. Sorry, 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 sorry. You're going to draw your trend line on that immediate market. And on break of that trend line, you're going to wait for this break. Remember you're on the higher time frame. You're going to wait for this break here at this point. And when that trend line break happens, now you're going to go to your lower time frame, go to your lower time frame, and now look for trade setup on this area. So let me repeat. On the higher time frame, we'll be for having higher highs and higher highs. Then there will be divergence. Remember, divergence will be a swing high on the chart, but a swing low on the other side. So you have divergence. Now, once you've gotten divergence, what do you do? Now you draw a trend line. You draw a trend line on the higher time frame or the immediate market and wait for the break of that trend line. Once there is that break of that trend line, now you're going to go to your lower time frame. Go to your lower time frame of choice. And now look for a trade setup at that time or at that point where there is the trend line break. Note, you cannot get into a trade at this point here. Of course, there is a way, but maybe I will talk about it uh, on a, a different chart. Maybe a part two. I'll be doing a part two of the RSI divergence. So maybe I can mention that or that. But on this one, we want to take the super confirmed, the super uh, safe trading. Therefore, we're going to take trades when that happens or when these are break. On the selling side, we'll be having lower lows. And at some point there, we'll have this uh, swing low. But on the other side, it becomes a high of what I'm going to do. My drawing skills. So on the, on the other side, we'll be having swing lows and then at some point it goes higher. So when that happens, now we have divergence. 
since we have divergence, what is the next thing to do is, of course, to draw a trend line on the immediate market. Oops. To draw our trend line on the immediate market here. We wait for break, and once there's that break of that trend line, we're going to go to our lower time frame and look for edge. So those are the three steps. One, the divergence on the chart and RSI. Two, draw a trend line on the immediate market. And number three, wait for that break. Wait for that break of the trend line. And once the trend line is broken, go to a lower time frame and look for your trade setup now on trade setups of course you're going to look for trade setup based on your trading style um if you are one minute trader five minute trader now that's on you the lower time frame trading okay so we're done with that let's talk about the downtrend i've given you an example or oh, i've shown you i've drawn how to do that, maybe we can go to the chart really quick. So on the chart, you'll be doing this. So we have, this is USD's uh, JPY on the four hours. So you want to identify your divergence. So this is what I'm saying. On the higher time frame chart, you see we having, the market is pushing higher, but what about on the RSI? It's pushing lower. So this is a sign that there will be some selling that is about to happen so what do you do now you take your trend line and draw it on the immediate market so you can either draw it this way okay and what do you want you want to see the break you want to see that break you want to see that break of your trend line okay and of course the break of this low by this huge candlestick now you go to a lower time frame, you see by the break, there will be break and retest. You see this for our candle here retested. So if you go to a lower time frame, now you'll be looking for entries and you're going to get a very beautiful entry at that uh, retest of the trend line break. That's how to get a confirmed trade. Kindly do not take trades if they are not confirmed. Again, this is what happened uh, this week, the week that is ending the days that you're ending today depending on how you count your days so we have this to the low the market is creating lower lows lower lows lower lows but on the rsi the market is not creating those lower lows okay so what do you do now you go to your higher time frame and of course you can draw a trend line on the immediate market you see this the break of that trend line and we're hoping that this will be a retest either of the trend line or the buying zone here. And hopefully, if it's able to retest and move up, we'll be looking for a buy trade, but if it violates that low, if it violates this low, then of course we'll be continuing down. But all steps have been met with broken structure, broken that to the higher part, we've broken the trend line, we'll only be looking for entry since we've actually been created more examples more examples this is USDCHF now this is an example of a narrow a narrow type of divergence now look at the charts they are quite close to each other we have a high then another higher high but what's happening on the other side we're not having higher highs we are now pushing a lower we are having the lower high so this is pushing down while on the chart is pushing up. The other example here, we have this is higher and this is higher high, but on the chart, we're not pushing up, we're pushing down. And how I'm drawing these, these are just trend lines, by the way. For beginners, it's just a trend line. You just draw it depending with what you want. So I'm just drawing lines, there's nothing special on that. But if you're having the TDI or the customized uh, TDI, of course, you don't need to draw the lines. Eh? It will be drawing lines for you. Okay? So that's the benefit of having the customers. But when you, uh, RSI is quite easy to do, so just draw those lines. Here we have another tight one or a narrow one. You see, these are lower low. 
and then it creates another lower low. But on the TDI, it does not uh, do that. It does not show that uh, lower low on the TDI. It goes higher. I hope you can see this. Let me maybe enlarge it. On the chart, it's pushing down. You can see this is a lower low and this is a lower low. But on the other side, this is a lower low, but this is a higher low. So on the other side, it's pushing up. Now, how to tell this on a chart? If you're you know, the untrained eye, you can actually go to a light chart. You see, these are candlestick. Up here, there are ways to change your chart to any type of chart. So click on this as a line chart. If you click on line chart, now you can see what uh, you can see the type divergence quite well. Even this, look at this one. Can see it really well so we have a high and a high but now the thing with the line chart it does not incorporate uh the manipulation or the the, the weeks eh? but you can just see it it's really nice the, the swings are well defined so go back to your candlestick chart the line chart is supposed to confirm uh if that was actually higher or lower okay and that is confirmed and now you can get divergence now remember once you've confirmed that there is divergence the next thing you do is of course to draw your trend line just draw your trend line uh with, on the immediate so if this was a what i'm trading i'll just draw that trend line the trend line and you want to have the break of that trend line and of course the break of this low and then from there you go to your lower time frame and look for entry on that area and you have enjoyed that move down. The same thing with this other one here. So we have divergence, it's confirmed. Uh, we have divergence to uh, the chart is showing up, the other side is showing down. So draw your trend line from the immediate market. How to draw your trend lines now depends, you can uh, watch the video on trend line so that you know which type of trend line you want to draw. Now we have that break of our trend line to the downside. Now once this candlestick close here, now you can uh, look for setting opportunities. Of course, there are other ways of trading uh, that I'll mention on part two of that so that maybe you do not lose all this time. Well, it's called aggressive trading, but we we'll talk about that on another. But that is how to use trend lines is extra confirmation. If you want to really keep your account safe, if you really want to keep your account safe, kindly do not get into divergence trading or into a divergence trade until it is super, super confirmed. Now, if you're new or you still don't know the different types of trend lines that we have and how to trade them and of course how to use them or place them i have a video on this channel so you can actually just post this one and go to the videos and look for that title on how to use trend lines profitably in that video i've discussed the different trend lines how to draw them and of course how to use them now how else can we use or how else can we confirm our divergence if we are not using trend lines of course the easiest way is to again you can use moving average now when it comes to moving average moving average is a moving trend line it's a trend line it's only that it's dynamic or it's moving now on how to choose your moving average now that will be on you i have done a video on that I've done a video on that so on this video you know the different types of moving average how to combine them and of course the best to use on confirmation, I usually prefer using the 50 SMA or the 100 SMA, or you can use the 100 EMA. Of course, the 20 uh, SMA, it's all on you, the one that you want to use. Now, when you go to your chart, you want to maybe set in your, remember it's on higher time frame. The confirmation should be done on higher time frame, then trade setup on lower time frame. So you go to go to your chart, then you're going to insert indicator moving average. Now the moving average are trend. They are not oscillators, they are trend indicators. So you go to moving average. You can choose to use the 50. 
you give it uh, can be exponential or SMA depending on what you want and then you just click OK and there you have your ENA so or SMA depending on your choice and here I have my 50 EMA now 50 EMA is magical when it comes to precision especially with divergence it will do you good if you can use them but again use the one that you feel comfortable now look at how the EMA are in the trend line okay of course the, the EMA is a bit lucky it's gonna be a little bit late but it gives you it gives you that you know that precise gives you that extra extra flow so the same way that you use the trend line you want to have the break you want the break of that uh, moving average and the test now that is where you'll be looking for your entries on the lower time frame. Again, same way on this other end here, you want your EMA to be broken or your moving average to be broken. And once it's broken, you'll be looking for entry at that point. So when you're using moving average, these are the example or the steps, sorry, these are the steps to follow. One, find divergence on your chart. And of course, on RSI, there's no divergence on chart on. When it comes to divergence, it has chart in RSI. Then insert your moving average. Now wait for break. After you've, I, you've identified the divergence, wait for the break of your moving average. And once your moving average has been broken, now go to your lower time frame. And at the point where it's broken, now look for trade. Entry. So that is how to use moving average, your step by step use of the moving average. Now, there is also an extra way, there's also a that way on how to confirm, and this is by use of candlestick patterns. By use of candlestick patterns, there are different types of candlestick patterns. We have continuation, we have reversal patterns. In this case, we'll be using reversal candlestick patterns and there's a video on that so you can actually pause this one if you don't know or maybe clear this one and go to the other video on candlestick patterns so that you know the ones that hold strongest okay now once the divergence has been identified you're going to look for any significant candlestick pattern on the second leg head of the divergence now make sure it's a strong reversal pattern before entry Examples can be the engulfing, the harami, the register, and others, of course. So what I'm saying is on the second leg, remember divergence shows two legs, okay? So we have this first leg, and then we have this second leg. So when you're using candlestick uh, patterns, you want to check on this candlestick area, this second leg, so maybe we can just uh, maybe highlight it so we're interested in this area here interested in this area now what are the candlestick what's the candlestick language once you've seen that now you go to a lower time frame remember we're not getting our entries on the higher time frame so you're going to go to the lower time frame with this pattern here and now check what's happening on the lower time frame on the same area okay so if we were to go to on 15 I usually prefer uh my 15 so if we are to go to six twelve let's see what's happening with that second See, we could have just opened the fifteen. Let's do this together. I should have picked the that. The that. Let's just work with fifteen since we are the four. 
So this is the area that I highlighted. I see. So this this whole thing, this whole thing is the second leg on the higher time frame. And on the higher time frame, it was just a doji, right? But see, inside that doji, was it a doji or a shooting star? On that area there, this is all that is happening. So when you go to a lower time frame, what are you going to look for? For example, you can look for market structure, okay? So you're gonna be looking for this one, two, three, then we wait for a break, okay? And maybe we retest out of, uh, after hitting liquidity and you get in on that. So now when you go to a lower time frame, you'll be looking, you can also be looking for RSB, L LSB, sorry, last, last step. So you have the breaker block here, it has been broken and then there's a retest and then you can get that entry. Again, you can be having ketchup. So if you have ketchup, you wait for break of ketchup. It will maybe be broken by this inside candlestick. So if there's that break, you can wait for retest or just get in with the break or wait for retest and then join in. Again, on the lower time frame, it all depends with your trading style. But basically, I just want to I just wanted to mention how to change. So on the higher time frame, all that area was actually this uh, doji here. All that area that I've shown you on the lower time frame was just a doji on the higher time frame. So when you go to the lower time frame, depending with your trading style, you pick your entry. Remember, entry should always be on the second leg. On the second leg. Moving on. Uh, so those are the three ways that you can actually just confirm RSI and divergence to give you that extra confidence. So note, if there's no significant candlestick pattern, then you can go to a lower time frame, but do not take the trade by guesswork, follow price action king. Remember price action is where you wait for the market and then to move, and then you react based on that movement. Okay, not based on what you think should happen. No, you react based on that movement. Market. And of course, if you're still learning on the different types of candlestick patterns that you have and how to use them, there's a video on this channel on that. So you can look for that title on the channel and know which uh, patterns to use and which ones to ignore. Now, notes, important notes is that the patterns can be used with other oscillator indicators. It doesn't have to be used by RSI only. I've just used RSI because we don't have to have the longest video, but you can use the same rules. The same way I've explained why using RSI, you can use the same rules if you're going to use MACD, the TDI, the CCI, any type of oscillator can be used to identify, uh, to identify divergence. So that will be it on this video. Note, you can always communicate by going to the Forex Exploits online page on Facebook and on LinkedIn, send us your message, your feedback, let us know how you're faring, and of course, tell us the video topics that you want us to discuss. Be very careful on the unconfirmed divergence. This is one way that will make this strategy fail all the time. If you take trades that are not confirmed, is gonna be a mess. I know there will be people will be like, the emergence does not work all the time. Yes, it does not work all the time. If you take the that type of divergence that you say the unconfirmed or the failed divergence, make notes and pay attention so that you don't get yourself into a bad trade. Again, I'm Wajiri Shangi from Forex Exploits on the Academy. Until the next video, I want to wish you the very, very best. Happy Trading October. Bye-bye.